Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Wednesday, hump day, and I thought I would just um, finish up my blepharoplasty <laughs> um, video, and it doesn't mean that if you ask some questions down below, if I need to, I'll make a third video. I want to keep answering your questions because, I don't know, if you go through it, I want, you, I want to help you as much as I can, and so today I have written down some questions that you guys asked, and I also have some things that I didn't have time to tell you last time. So, um, if you're just tuning in, I had the blepharoplasty on my upper eyelids, um, and today I have on no eyeshadow. I just have on, um, let's see, Laura Mercier Eye Basics in Buff. My look today is inspired by Makeup by Tiffany D. I watched a video of hers this morning, and she used her Makeup Forever sticks, and um, she did hardly, you know, just an eye base and then just lashes. She didn't put lashes on. She ended up just, but she's got gorgeous long lashes, so she doesn't need to. So I put on my favorite lashes, which are the House of Lashes Iconic. But um, I used the Burberry, Burberry cream shadow like she did or cream blush and I used something today I was gonna wait to show you this because I don't have everything up here, but I'll just show you this one thing I got a package from Tammy this week We're doing a little bit of a gift swap type thing that we do and she sent me this brush and I haven't gotten any of these brushes yet I keep wanting to Brooke wants there's a little one that is real good for contouring your nose that she wanted and this brush I put on everything I am wearing today except for the La Mer powder with this brush and it is just fabulous I mean who would have thought something like this because I thought okay I don't know if this is going to be too small for me to use so I just put the stick on all over and it's just there is just something about that tilt and about that point that makes it where everything just let me come as close as I can. Oh, that's as close as I can. Um, everything, it just went on so well, which I love those Makeup Forever sticks anyway. And then I used the, one of the darker Makeup Forever sticks for contour. And then I used um, the Burberry Rose Cream Blush, which is one of my favorites. And um, I put, did put the Laura Mercier Eye Basics on with my finger. And, um, but I put on, oh, and I, I have on a new concealer, too, that I love, and I'm going to show you on Friday. I have to, I have to string you on a little bit, but, um, looks like Sassy's opened my door. I had the door shut down there. Um, anyway, so I'm using this brush, and I love it, so thank you, Tammy. Oh, I'll show you the rest of this stuff. I actually have two boxes of things that I got when I was down and out after I'd had surgery. My friend Amy sent me a box of stuff and my friend Robin sent me a box of stuff. And I just haven't had a real good time to show, show you everything, but I haven't been using it because I've been waiting to show you. So I'm gonna do that soon. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it tomorrow because um, tomorrow I have a checkup appointment with my um, plastic surgeon. They're gonna check on this situation and then they want to take um, after photos of my eyes and last time I went I had makeup on so they asked me to come in with no eye makeup on which I guess I could make a video with no eye makeup on but that wouldn't be very much fun so anyway I might try to squeeze this those in on Friday if not I'll do that on the weekends because there's some things in there that I think a lot of you would like um, I know there's a toner that Amy sent me um, I think this nail polish is this no there's a nail polish that I've already used out of Robin's gift too that's really pretty so anyway, I'll do that soon. Oh, I always get off on a tangent. So anyway, thank you, Tiffany, for inspiring me today. I love to be inspired. And when you guys tell me that I've inspired you, that makes me feel so good because I love that feeling. When I get, when I'm not really, you know, feeling it and then I watch something and I have, you know, kind of something to go on. Okay, so additional questions for my blepharoplasty. And like I said, I just had the upper eyelids done and you can probably see... Um, this scar is a little bit worse than this one just because they had so much more skin to remove over there. And this is something I wanted to show you. This is what I'm using for um, my scars. It's the Skin Medica Scar Recovery Gel. I don't know if this is any better than Mederma. I've never really even used anything like that. 
um, but I got this small one. It comes in this kind of like a lip. Let me back out a little bit. <laughs> That's bothering me. It um, comes like in a lip gloss thing, and I just get a little bit on my finger, and I put it on the scar, and I was thinking this morning, and I think I even wrote it down, that my scar is still, like when you press on it, it still is still a little bit sore. You know, it'll take a couple of months for it to finish up healing and everything, but um, it isn't sore, like, you know, where it's killing you, but you can definitely tell that something's there. And then I'm also putting this on my scars down here. Not as much underneath. I've got that big incision underneath, which I'll get into that, but around the other ones. So that's what I'm using for there, and I bought it at their office. Um, last time I forgot to really discuss, um, like, the medications. And I told you that um, you have to take your pain pill with you, which I did not get to take for a while because I woke up nauseous and throwing up or trying to throw up and someone said you know that they thought that they would give me something for nausea and they did um I can remember the nurse saying um you know we gave you the Finnegan and it's so funny because in my mind I was you know you know when you're out of it or something like that the weirdest things like you know play over and over in your head and you think about the weirdest things I was thinking did they put something up my butt <laughs> Because in my mind, you know, I think of Finnegan like you give to children where it's a suppository. And I remember thinking, I don't feel like they did. And, you know, I couldn't believe I felt violated. But I'm sure they put it in my IV. I just, I was just out of it. And that's, I can remember that bothering me the whole time. Because, you know, it's, it's just weird to wake up and not know what's going on. Having a blindfold on or those, you know, bandages on and everything. Okay, so... Comfy clothes. Of course, they tell you to wear um, something that's easily taken on and off because they have to dress you after surgery. So I just bought a little sweatsuit from, I called it my surgery suit. I bought a little sweatsuit from Victoria's Secret that was a zipper jacket and I didn't wear anything under it and um, pull on pants. But make sure you have clean and ready to go some other really comfy clothes because in my mind, I, I just... I don't know, I felt like I was going to feel so good, which if you're just having this done, you're probably going to feel a lot better than I did having both of them done. But just have some comfy clothes ready because um, you're not going to want to put on jeans and stuff like that because, you know, you're going to want to lounge around some. Okay, this the, I thought about this this morning. For some reason, I guess I had kind of just, um, because I had let my Botox and everything go before the eye surgery, I had kind of let my eyebrows go and um, had not, you know, tweezed them or had them um, threaded or anything in a while. And after you have the surgery, you do not want to even think about pulling on that skin because you're so freaked out about that incision healing just right. I mean, you don't, in my mind, I did not even want to make it pucker or anything. So it was a couple of weeks before I had my eyebrows. It was, I think we, it was probably three weeks because I'm at five weeks today. And um, I think it was three weeks before I had them tweezed. And so they were looking terrible and they were, it was bothering me, you know. So have your eyebrows done before you do the surgery. That way it won't bother you. Okay, and I wrote down gross or ick factor. And I was just thinking that is, that was probably one of the worst things to me about this is there's just something about knowing that they have cut out part of your eyelids and that it's stitched together and I felt like anytime I even wanted to raise my eyebrows I felt like it was going to open and I just I think that was one of the things that was almost worse than any pain there was hardly any pain with it at all and so just you know if that just have that in your mind make sure that you know that's going to be on your mind and that you get over it it's just part of it, I think. But that was one of the things that kind of bothered me the most is just what if, what if, you know, keeping on thinking, what if I scratch my eye when I'm sleeping or what if I do this, but I didn't. So, um, okay, this is a very, very important point to me. Okay, different surgeons do this in different ways, of course. You'll notice that he brought down my incisions down here like this. Then you'll notice some surgeons um, will bring it up and out, and they even, some of them say they even try to do a little bit of a lift. Thank goodness that I did not have that done because I think that's where you can kind of get like this look where your eyelids kind of maybe pulling away or something. I don't know. I did not want anything done like that, any lifts or anything. 
And so he told me he was gonna, he does them down like that. And the reason is, he said, a lot of times when people do them off to the side like that, it can get caught or run into like a crow's feet wrinkle or um, even cause one, you know, you know, a lot of times if there's already a divot, that skin will naturally wrinkle there and it can cause like a deep wrinkle. And so he doesn't do that. He does it down. Well, you can see, I'm as up close as I can be, um, and it's hard to see now. It's hard to see, period. But th at the very end of my stitches, there was a little teeny, not really a puckering, but just a little, I don't know, just a little teeny bit of skin um, that is not perfect. Because, okay, if you have a, your eyelid and you take out, anybody that's sewn, you'll know what I'm talking about. You take out a piece of of the middle it's hard to get all of it to match just perfectly so on the ends it just it's not that it puckered it was just a little bit i don't know i don't know how to say it less than a bump or anything but just a little piece of something and um they told me to rub it with this scar gel and what they'll do is have me come back in i think he said five or six months and if it still bothers me or is there, what they do is they put you under local anesthetic and they literally just snip it and put a stitch in. And they said it's gone and you'll never see it again. Now, I don't think it's going to bother me. It doesn't bother me now. I don't think it's going to bother me in six months. But, you know, I'm going to just see how that goes. So that is the reason if you wonder why my incision is coming down instead of them pulling it up or anything. I did not go into this wanting a lift or to change the shape of my eyes that would have really devastated me because as I've told you before I'm so glad that nothing I did really changed the way I look because um, I didn't know how much that would bother me until after the surgery and even with my boobs now being different I can tell I just I don't regret it but I can tell that I do not want to do anything like that ever because it would just freak me out I'm just too old <laughs> I've just looked like this for too long okay so that's something I wanted to tell you um, a question that I was only asked I think once or twice but I feel like is important to us moms is um, how Brooke and Will took the news now I told you that I had told Brooke about it about both surgeries beforehand and and she pretty much, you know, every child is going to be upset a little bit, but she pretty much understood and was okay. She's mature about stuff like that. And Will, um, I kind of, I picked him up from school one day and I looked over at him and I said, Will, you see all this extra skin over here? He said, yeah. And, um, and I said, well, I, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to have them, you know, remove that so that it isn't there. And so my eyes can open up all the way and everything. And he says, oh, so you're going to get plastic surgery? And um, I was like, yeah, so you know how kids are. You can't pull anything over on them. But um, what I was really worried about is how they were going to take it when they came home from school that day. And you saw in the last video that day I came home how bad it looked. It looked bad. I mean, it could look could have looked worse. I did not have as much swelling as I thought I would. But we really were good about keeping the cold presses on my eyes. Um, both of them took it really well. I mean, I remember Brooke came, come and laid in the bed with me and, you know, was looking at her phone and laying with me. So for her, that is a big deal because she's the type that gets freaked out really easy. And, um, you know, Will kind of checked me out and didn't think anything of it. And then it heals so quickly. It's amazing how fast it heals. So they both took it really well. They it didn't, neither one of them cried or got upset or anything. And that really, really, really made me feel better. It really helped because you kind of feel um, a little bit guilty because it's an elective thing and you feel like you don't want to put anybody out. You don't want to upset anybody because it's it would be different if I had, you know, um, had to have kidney surgery or something that I had to have. But so it makes you feel good when people are accepting and um, you don't feel like you're a burden or you don't feel like you're upsetting anyone. And so that was important to me. Okay, under eyes. A lot of people do upper and lower. Um, I really don't have the bags or the fat under my eyes. If anything, I just have a little bit of hollowing out, but I didn't need to have it underneath. But, you know, I've heard great results on people that do have it underneath. I think it, when you have it underneath, I think the surgery may be a little bit more expensive. Of course, if you have both, it's going to be more expensive. It may take a little bit longer. And usually for people that have um, puffy underneath 
like eye bags, there's usually fat in there and they have to get the fat out and you're going to have more bruising than I did. You can you saw in those pictures I mainly just had bruising on this side because it was worse and a little bit of bruising over here and um, it wasn't that bad. Okay, did my eyes itch? No, not, not like you would think. Not to the point where I was scared I was going to scratch it. Um, just a little bit they did, but not crazy. Not as much, I mean, and not anything that bothered me real bad. Um, oh, and I need to go back to my meds. Okay, texture. Someone wanted to know, did it improve the texture of my eyelids? Because you want to know about crepey eyelids. It does to the point where they're really firm now. I mean, you can see they're just so firm. I mean, used to, I had to really, to put my contacts in, I had to lift up my top lid and pull down my bottom to put my contacts in. Now I can just do like that and pop my contacts in because there's not all that extra skin. It does really firm it up, but your skin is still your skin. So I don't, it, and it, they didn't pull it so tight that it's, you know, smoothed out all the skin. It's just firm. And you wouldn't want them to pull it that tight because then you might get that real, you know, too open look. So I would say, yes, it does, but not, you know, perfectly. It's just going to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, <laughs> this is funny. Washcloth in the shower. That was one of the things. I mean, it took me a good... I think two or three weeks before I had a good, successful, non-freak out shower. And you can take shower, I could take a shower the next day. And so I think I did. No, I think I took one. So I had the surgery on Wednesday. I didn't take a shower on Thursday, but I did take a shower on Friday. And it is very freaky because you can't wash. I couldn't wash my eyelids, you know, like with any Cetaphil or anything until the next week after my first post-op. But when you're in the shower, you don't realize how many times, it's kind of like the eyelash extensions, you don't realize how many times you press your eyes to dry them, like when you're drying your hair and stuff. So make sure that you have a um, either a towel close by, or what I did is put a, each time I would put a dry washcloth in the shower and I would put it kind of away so that it wouldn't get wet, too wet, and then I, you know, would reach over there and lightly dab my eyes, and I had to keep on doing that, you know, and just, you just have to be real careful in the shower and when you get out, and it's just so easy, you don't think about how many times you just reach up and wipe your eyes, so just, that's a little tip that really helped me, um, I've already told you about the mask, that may or may not help you, I ended up not using it, and, um, They'll have cold packs and stuff for you to use. Okay, um, scar is still sensitive. So that's something I've already told you about. Okay, medication. They gave me the antibiotic. I took a stool softener that they told me to and didn't have any problem. And um, they gave me, gosh, the generic form, but I think it was, I can't remember what it was. If it was Vicodin or Percocet. It was one of those. It was one of those narcotic type. It, I'll, I'll find out and put down here because I did not take all of them. And I said I could take two at a time and I only took one. And it was whatever pain medication they gave me, they said they gave me the one that was out without the Tylenol in it. So if I wanted to take an additional Tylenol with it, I could. And so I did that a couple of times. And this is what I want to say. I barely took any pain medication, and I don't know, for some reason, I was in this thing where I had to get off of it. Because I guess, I don't know, I've never had any problems with being addicted to anything, and I never take all my pain medications. But I guess it's just freaky, taking something like that. And it makes me itch like crazy. So every time I took a pain pill, I had to take a Benadryl to kind of, I mean, just itch, itch, itch all over. I mean just everywhere and that's the last thing you want to be doing when you've had both those surgeries so um but what i want to say in hindsight is take your pain pills you're not going to want them when you're not hurting anymore I, I really think i would have been better off because i didn't really sleep a lot i would do a little bit of dozing 
nights are not fun because you have to sleep kind of sitting up like this and then I also had this going on so I couldn't turn to the side so I would almost panic when nighttime was coming because I knew I wasn't going to sleep very well but um and I've just actually just started sleeping pretty good in the last week so go ahead and take your pain medications for those first couple of days and just sleep through it just let your body heal I think if in, in hindsight if I would have maybe slept more let my body heal, um, not spend as much time worried about what else was going on in the house. My kids are old enough to take care of themselves. Sean could handle it, but, you know, the mom in me, you know, it's like I could hear everything going on, and I'm thinking, did they brush their teeth? Does Brooke have her retainer in? You know, I'm thinking all that stuff, whereas I need to probably, I need to have been kind of zoned out. But I did, I took some pain medications Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, not every four or whatever hours, just a couple of times. And I think by Sunday, I was completely off just taking Tylenol. And really from there on out, I only took it when I felt like I needed it. And it was mostly for my mastopexy, not for this. So it's really not a big deal. Don't be afraid that you're gonna have to be on pain med medication for a long time. And um, go ahead and take it so you can sleep. And you don't have to worry about, you know, things that I worried about. So I think that's it. I do remember one more question that I meant to write down. Um, someone asked me that, um, you know, how could they tell how much to cut out of the skin when you're laying down because the skin would kind of spread out? And I thought that was an excellent question. And they mark you before you go into surgery. They mark this and this um, while you're standing up. They make sure that your brow is down and can't believe I've had you up here this <laughs> sorry they make sure your brow is down and um, they mark it then so you don't have to worry about that they know exactly and they have that little tool that marks the exact amount so my mom was there and kind of watched them mark me so I felt even more confident and um, so anyway I hope that helps some um, I I hate to do an outfit of the day. I've got some stuff still over there. I did get my sofa, but I haven't gotten the pillows. I haven't gotten my room done just like I want it yet. I want to get, for some reason, I went to Target, um, TJ Maxx, and Marshalls, and all the pillows they have out almost look like indoor-outdoor pillows, and I guess they're more spring and summer. So today, I think I might go to Home Goods because I want some cozy comfy pillows not just pretty throw pillows I might get a few of those but I want some that we can really use because I don't want to use the ones that came on the couch not that there's anything wrong with them but I wanted to put it's charcoal gray and I wanted to either put some hot pink or coral on there but um the dress I have on is one from um Sita Couture I got it in black and this gray and it is a midi dress and um so that's what I have on and it's neat. It comes with like a slip underneath it. And um, so that's what I have on. Second day hair, crazy. I really wasn't planning on making a video, but I just didn't see a chance to make another one before this week or before Friday. And um, I wanted to. So I guess that's it. Oh, um, ex accessories. I have on these Sheila Fajal hoops, which reminds me that I, um, I'm getting a bunch, a bunch of new Sheila Fajal stuff in. I actually have sold a bunch of stuff and um, made room. I haven't been getting as much stuff from her lately because I wanted to get rid of some old stuff and then get in some new. And um, I've asked her for some different things that I think are going to be fun. So that'll be coming probably next week. And I've got on the nude um, Sol Solange got the cover for here Solange ring it's like a lips ring and my nail polish is um bikini sotini by Essie and I think that's it and I also have on the lip combo that Tiffany wore it is the natural mauve from Lancome with the Anastasia um I can't remember the name of it but it's that nude one I'll put everything down below so I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you on Friday. Bye-bye.